Hi, good evening. This is Round by Round with James Gogi. I am the host, James Gogi. We're here in Ciro's restaurant here in Westaco, Texas. They got a lot of good food here. Hmm, I can smell it. We're going to eat good afterwards. <laughs> but anyway, this is a very special night we have. It's going to be the first annual 2014 Rio Grande Valley Boxing of the Year Awards. And tonight we're going to be announcing Fighter of the Year, Promoter of the Year, Fighter of the Year, Trainer of the Year, Amateur Fighter of the Year, Upset of the Year, Sportsman of the Year, Prospect of the Year, and the Commitment to Excellence Award. Uh, but in the first half, we're gonna first fight. I want to first thing I want to talk about, award I want to talk about is uh, award in courage, heart, mental, mental intestinal fortitude. Okay, uh, the recipient I gave this award to was a guy who showed me that. Okay, in this fight in San Antonio last year, it was by far fight of the year in the Rio Grande Valley. I don't know why it wasn't televised, uh, you know, the politics that go on in boxing, but that fight should have been going, that sh fight should have been a TV fight. It was made for TV. Action both ways, momentum shifts both ways. Uh, the individual got, they both got dropped a couple times, but the guy that pulled out the fight is the guy to my left, Sergio Perales, who I nominated for Fight of the Year because of uh, the great fight he put on, but the, the Arturo Gatti courage and heart and mental to intestinal fortitude he showed in that fight, especially that second knockdown. My God, I didn't think he was getting up, but you know what he did? He dig deep down in himself. He willed himself to get up, and a couple, of, couple rounds later, he stopped Raul Martinez and, it was, oh, by far, best fight he, Best fight of the year in the Rio Grande Valley, and the best fight of the year that was never tele that wasn't televised. So the winner, this award, Sergio Perales, fight of the year. Everybody, give him a hand. <laughs> now, now, Sergio, wow, what a great fight! <laughs> oh yeah, it was a tough fight, and um, I went out there to win, and I'm just happy I got it done. You got knocked down. What round the first time? Oh man, the first one wasn't a knockdown. I actually hurt my knee in the second round, um, and I was fighting with a, a hurt hand and a hurt knee. Um, I, he did drop me the, on the seventh round. Uh, the second was, knockdown. The Let me ask you this. Knockdown. Yeah, the second knockdown was a, was was a knockdown. The first one uh, it was a, it was because of my knee, but it got kind of as a knockdown. So I, I'm I'm not complaining. I mean, I pulled out with the victory. Um, I'm just thankful for that. Second knockdown. What were you thinking? I mean. You had to will yourself to get up because I didn't think you were going to get up by watching it on YouTube. Uh, yeah, I just, man, I trained hard. I, I just, it was a, the other conditioning that got me up. You know, I, I have, I don't have quit in my blood. I just keep on going. So uh, I just pulled out for the victory, went out for the victory. And, the, you know, besides the knockdowns, they were both, <laughs> they were both trading blows, big time blows, hard blows. And golly, uh, that fight is like having three fights in one night. Oh, yeah, yeah. Raul, um, I knew going in he was a tough opponent. Uh, I sparred with him when I, was in, when I was in the amateurs getting ready for the Olympic tryouts. And uh, I, I, I would think that one, maybe one day we were going to meet. You know, he was in my weight yeah. class, and, and it ended up being there in his hometown. And um, I just went with, with, with everything. You know, I trained hard for it, and, and I'm just happy I got the victory. Now, I was, I was going to say... Was there other times in the fight that he hurt you? Because he hit you with some hard shots. Yeah, um, hurt, I, I guess. Man, um, I could say he, he's a tough fighter. He's a strong fighter. Um, but um, I just had a will to, to win, and, and that's just what I did. That's what it did. That's, that's why he's got, you know, fight of the year. Uh, because in order to, to win the fight of the year contest, you've got to be in a war. And that's what he did. In order to fight in that type of fight, you got to have a lot of, you know, mental intestinal fortitude and heart and uh, courage and will. So, congratulations again, Sergio A. That fight should propel you into a big fight. Maybe Randy Caballero, the IBF champion, since you're ranked. Well, hopefully, um, uh, I have a date February 18th in Japan against uh, Iwasa. Yeah. And uh, is he the champion? No, he's a. Uh, we're fighting an eliminator for the IBF, and uh, winner of me and him gets a shot at Randy Caballero for the for the world title. So. 
I'm just training for, for, for February now. Okay, so he's going to be fighting in Japan again, in an eliminator. So wins that fight, he'll be the mandatory to fight uh, Randy Cavalero, the new IBF champion. Uh, so let's look out for him and, uh, you know, wish him luck and uh, see what happens. Okay, the next award we're going to go to, okay, this gentleman, okay, it didn't start last year. It started when he was eight years old, seven years old, okay? Uh, taking his son and grooming him to the amateur ranks. Hey, you know how hard it is? How many amateur fights did your son have? Over 100? Uh, like 80. Okay, look at all those fights he had to go to. Jeez, that takes a lot of time and effort to take your son not only here into Mexico, but, you know, taking him everywhere to get the best barn and, you know, to making sure, to making sure you know, he developed to his potential. You know, that's what I call sacrifice, okay? Uh, he, his son came off two great wins on the big stage, Showtime, Championship Boxing, okay? His last fight, oh, it was a hell of a fight. Candidate for fight of the year. Uh, spectacular knockout, <laughs> which qualified him for knockout of the year. And it just didn't start last year. It started, you know, like he said, when he was uh, eight years old. Uh, this gentleman, the reason why I gave him the award, he had two great wins on TV. Uh, he got his own amateur program. They're starting a new gym. They're going to be opening up in three months. It will be officially open. And the sacrifice he put into his son to make sure he got to where he wanted to. And to me, you know, that's why Omar Figueroa Sr. is the uh, 2014 Trainer of the Year. Damn. Here it goes. No, that ain't it right here. Okay. Okay. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I got it mixed up. I think that's it right here. Yeah. Got the. My guy got the uh, awards mixed up. <laughs> but anyway, Omar. Hey, that was a great year you had last year. Two great wins on Showtime cha Championship Boxing. Uh, closed the show with a spectacular knockout. Made the made. Pretty much saved the night, okay? The other fights on Showtime Championship Boxing that night were just dreadful. Omar closes the show, spectacular knockout. Hey, what do you ha what do you have in plans uh, plans for your son next year? Well, um, be a little louder. first first of all, um, his injuries they're keeping him, you know, out of the boxing right now. But uh, hopefully next year, yeah. uh, we get we get some uh, some fights going. Okay. So uh, that's that's what we're. That's what we're planning on right now. Now, since he's fighting big fights, he expects big fights all the time, okay? Uh, you know, Showtime Championship Boxing, uh, maybe HBO, but, you know, is he going to be staying at 135 or 140? I think next fight would be at 140, and then we're going to see how it goes from there, and hopefully the following fight would be at 135. Okay, like I said, he had a great year. They're, they're on the big stage. Uh, they're making great money, and that's what you're in this business. It's a business, okay? And, you know, next year, he's in a division where there's a lot of good fighters he can fight to make good paydays, to win, you know, bigger fights and everything. So, like I said, but the thing is, you know, that's good and dandy, but the, you know what? The sacrifices this man put in, the money he spent on his kid, uh, you know, the pain and heartaches of going through this, you know, that you that you uh, experience in this business, oh my God, it's just one thing after another. <laughs> and it takes a man with a strong passion and a strong desire to overcome that. Because look, a lot of people, you know, when they get hit with all these obstacles and disappointments, they quit. But you know, it takes a special person to keep on going, plugging ahead, plugging ahead when things ain't going right. So, you know, that's why, you know, I picked him for the trainer of the year, not only for, you know, guiding his son to two great victories, but all the other reasons I talked about. So, congratulations. I still remember sometimes training on Saturday nights, yep. uh, Sunday nights, and my sons, you know, they were pissed out, they were training, but I told them, you know. It's called sacrifice. Sacrifice, and, and now I tell them, hey, there was a reason, now you're the world champion. Yep, yep. And I'm doing the same thing with Brandon, I mean, we're going on the same path. Yep. So, hopefully one day, uh, I'll have two world champions. And the thing is, it's, uh, you know, like I said, taking them to all these smokers ain't free, uh, taking them around to get good sparring, equipment, 
golly, you know, it's yeah. it's like a side business where you're not making no money until you turn pro. So, you know, you got to thank this man because it's the trainers out there that make boxing successful is guys like this guy, okay, that are putting the time and effort and the sacrifices without without getting uh, nothing back in return. So, you know, congratulations, and uh, let's have uh, 2015 a big year, okay? Okay, thank you. Okay, the next honor I'm going to have is, oh, can we have uh, Augustine Ort? Can you come up here? Can you sit right here, Omar? Yeah, oh, right here. Augustine, you can go ahead, sit down. August, Augustine Ort, can we come here? Next award I'm giving to is a, an upstart promoter, okay? He just started in here. His first two shows, you know, he took some losses. But the thing what amazed me is he continued, he, you know, he, he, he persisted, okay? In this business, being a promoter is a tough, tough business. It's, you either lose, break even, or small percentage of the time make money. So this promoter, new promoter, Augustine Ord, he, uh, first two shows, he didn't do too good. They lost a lot of money, but hey, he has a passion. Like I said, that's what keeps you going in this business, the passion to keep going forward. Uh, his next show was a great show uh, back in April. And this last past show he did with Top Rank was a great, great show. So he's got the ball rolling. Uh, reason why I picked him for promoter of the year is because of the fact he didn't quit after the first two fights. And he was the most consistent promoter in the Valley this year in promoting fights. Uh, a lot of promoters quit after they take a big loss, one or two. They said, hey, bye-bye. I'm going to go put my money into McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken, but not him. You know, he got a passion for this business. A young kid, he, he's going to uh, San Antonio, a UTSA college kid. Uh, he hasn't graduated yet, and he's promoting fights. <laughs> so, like I said, uh, you know, my 2014 for Promoter of the Year in the Rio Grande Valley Augustine Ord, give it up. Now, Augustine, you got big plans next year. You're going to have six shows. Can you talk about them? Yeah, we're having six shows. Actually, we're going to have uh, four, four shows in co-promotion with Top Rank. Four we're, shows, okay. Yes, sir, with Top Rank. We're going to have a boxing series, actually, here in the Valley. We're going to have three shows at the State Farm Arena starting on February 7th. And then we're going to close the year with Top Rank in November in San Antonio with an HBO show. Mm-hmm. So we have big plans, and then we're gonna have two local shows, just local kids, no top rank, no TV, just a normal show. So you're gonna have two shows here in the valley with top rank, three, three in the valley with top rank on Unimas, and he's gonna do two local shows for the fighters. Look, let me tell you, fighters, without the without promoters, it's hard for you guys to get your fights and develop yourself as a uh, develop your career as a fighter. Okay. Uh, Oliver McCall once told me, you guys who know Oliver McCall, he once told me, uh, you know, Don King, he stole a lot of money from me, but without Don King, I would have never made all that money. So it goes both ways, okay? You know, they risk their money so you guys can make money, bottom line. Uh, they put in the time, the sweat, and the effort to put on these shows, which it takes a lot of time, effort, and agony, and money, and you ain't guaranteed to make money until the you know end of the night when you count the tickets but the fighters you know at the end of the night they get their check so you got to thank guys for him who's going to be doing six shows next year four in the valley four uh, five in the valley and one in san antonio oh, five in the valley okay so there's a lot of fighters out there that can't that are not getting fights hey he could keep you active build your uh, build your record up and everything so we plan on looking forward next year to watching him uh, his promotional company grow uh next uh, do you have a main event for february we do not yet, but we, the only top-ranked fighters that we have uh, is Ivan Najera, who is 15-0, and 0, and Casey Ramos. But as part of the, the local kids, everybody's matched up except Lamas, and we're going to have three, well, as of right now, three good, good fights. They're fighting, uh, it's, they're going to be good fights. There's no, like, there's no good, uh, they're going to be, they're pretty much matched even. It's not like you're going to get a guy one and... Oh, fighting a yeah. guy undefeated. They're gonna be. We're, we're gonna have good fights. Competitive fights, not one one-sided mismatches. Okay, no. and that's what you need when you put on a uh, when you put on good fights, man. You can't have the mismatches because that turns fans off and fans ain't gonna come back. So you gotta have competitive fights where they're, exactly. you know, where they're gonna come back and uh, you know spend their hard-earned dollars. So congratulations, you know, we expect big things for you next year. Five shows, wow. Yeah. Okay, and they signed. 
they signed Luis Castro. They're going to be building him up. And who else are you going to showcase on that show next year? Oh, we're, we're have uh, Enrique Alvarez will be fighting versus uh, Jose Prado from from Har oh, from West Lago. That, that. Fight Robert Robert yeah. Campos. <laughs> that, that's that's a good one. Yeah, good. Then we have uh, Isaac six rounder. Yes, yes, six rounds. Then we have Isaac Torres fighting uh, Irving Tapia from Mission. Irving is four and also that that's a that's a good fight. From Mission, Texas. Yeah, he's from Mexico. Uh, Dominic Casas trains him. Okay. And then we have uh, Luis Castro will be fighting Jeremy Longoria. Six rounds? Six rounds oh, that's, also. That's a good fight, too. Yeah, they're, they're all good fights. I mean, we, we match them even because we want the fans to go to a show and watch a real fight. No, just go and watch one guy throw a punch and knock the other guy out. Okay. I mean, so so expect good fights next year. Uh, like I said, he's a student at UTSA in San Antonio, and he's promoting fights. And I don't know how he does that, but he does it. <laughs> but, hey. Like I said, uh, the promoters in the Valley, uh, him, Anthony Cavazos, Mario Davila, it's because of uh, these guys that are keeping boxing alive. Because you can have all the fighters in the world, but if you're, there ain't nobody promoting you, 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 you know, your fighter's going to be on the shelf. And the way you get better is by fighting, okay? There's only so much you could do in the gym with you and your coach. You know, you take it to the ne next level when you get in that gym, when you get in that ring on uh, fight night, and <laughs> fighting a live body, okay? So congratulations again, uh, Augustine. And we look, we expect big things from you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.